talk to us about what P2I stands for and what you have been doing. Certainly. So P2I stands for Preconception to Infancy. And this is a prevention project that I've been asked to lead um, by an um, a, a organization called the, uh, the Forum, which is a branch off of the Northwest Autism Foundation um, out in the Northwest. And the basic idea goes back to as we started recovering children um, with autism using the different biomedical approaches and seeing significant improvements in these families, in these kids. Mothers especially would start asking me if perhaps they may have some of the similar biomedical abnormalities as their children, and they felt now that their kid was getting better that they were actually ready to have another child, but were very scared to have another child due to the recurring um, prevalence when, within families, um, and really were questioning, well, maybe I have these same issues, and so they said, can I can I run these tests on myself and see if 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 I harbor some of these same issues, be it the candida, be it low vitamin D, heavy metals, um, other types of deficiencies. Um, issues with gluten and casein and of course that sounded like a very logical place to go looking and it turns out that when we started getting some of these test results back a lot of times we couldn't tell the mother from the child's original um, laboratory tests and if you held them up and you would cross out the names and, and or, the, or the birthdays of the, of the patient you really couldn't tell them apart and so we really using the same approaches that we have been doing with children with autism we started treating them the same way you know kind of use the same doses that I would use for uh, for uh, teenagers I would use for the young mothers and we started in making significant um, the mothers would start getting more energetic they'd have really healthy pregnancies a lot of these women were also having a lot of problems with miscarriages um, until they realized that their MTHFR their folate metabolism was an issue and we would get them on methylfolate and we started seeing some really wonderful successes to the point where we now estimate that there's been about a little over 500 patients that have been born into our practice and by that that means people who have come to me either at birth so not everybody comes to us preconception. That would be the ideal thing if we could make things as clean and natural as possible before a baby is even conceived. But whether they come to us during pregnancy or during lactation, you know, that's who we want to see. But in terms of babies who came to us of a newborn, whether they were pre-seen or up until then, those are who we consider born into our practice. And in the, in the past decade since we've been looking at this, we recognize that we have had really, there's one child in the entire practice with a questionable diagnosis of autism. And it, and that, that's really kind of being debated right now amongst whether it's there versus just some other speech delays and some other things. But let, relative to the one in seven, one in eight, if you have one child already to have a second child with autism, or the one in 60, one in 70, whatever number we want to use today for the overall prevalence of, of autism, um, we've seen wonderful, wonderful reduced statistics with uh, very healthy children. But one of the other things that we noticed is that it's not, this is really not just about autism because we really don't see children developing asthma. We don't see kids developing recurring ear infections. We've, I've never seen a child or patient develop diabetes. Not a single patient's ever had cancer. And so we seem to just be developing really, really healthy children. And it's kind of the exception that I'll see a child sick in between checkups. I mean, most kids in our practice, I really only see during their checkups. And so it's just a different approach by front loading and taking this look ahead of time and and treating things before it's a problem as opposed to treating things once it's a problem. It's so exciting and I have to tell you that it uh, it's something that fills me with hope and whenever people are talking to me about what are you hopeful about, um, this is one of the areas that I, I find the most hopeful. And, and I know that, you know, for some people there can be a little bit of controversy about they, you know, there are a lot of people who say, hey, I like the neurodiversity of autism and I'd hate to see that go away. But when you talk about all those other childhood disorders that you are also not seeing, I think it's really definitive. Um, I don't know how anybody could argue that getting a mother healthy um, and seeing healthy children being born could be anything other than fabulous. So again, this project is, is called P2I. Um, and is, is there any place that people can go to find out more information about it, Dr. Berger? Yeah, if, if you just Google P2I Forum, that's the nonprofit organization. It's very easy to find it. Um, you know, a lot of this stuff is based upon the 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 article that I had written on for Autism Digest, um, Autism Spectrum Digest, um, a couple years back. And so, if if people were to Google also my name, David Berger, um, with um, the article was called um, Preconception to Infancy. Um, um, 
approaches to uh, minimize the effects of autism. Um, you'll, you'll also find it there, or from that matter, from our webpage under uh, at holisticfamilycare.com under the uh, under the um, resources section. You'll find a lot. You'll find that article there as well.